For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's strength and unity. It's been a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. And the American flag has been a prominent icon in our national history. And after loyal duty, when it is worn, when it is torn, there is a dignified ceremony to remember, respect, and retire our national flag. On September 11, 2011, our American Legion Post 449 in Marysville, Michigan, recently held such a ceremony. Representatives from the Legion Post, Auxiliary, Sons of the Legion, and Legion Riders joined Marysville Police and Fire, St. Clair County Sheriff Department, Michigan State Police, Homeland Security, and community residents to salute our flag and remember those that lost their lives 10 years ago in this special flag disposal ceremony. According to the flag code, any American flag that is worn, damaged, or tattered beyond repair should be retired in a respectful and dignified manner. The preferred method is burning. Burning signifies purification and rebirth. The most important factor is showing respect to the flag during its disposal. A collection of worn and tattered flags was held at the Legion Post. And on this warm summer evening, the ceremony for the disposal of unserviceable flags begins. Post members and guests assembled out of doors at night. Members are aligned in two parallel rows about 20 feet apart, facing each other. Officers are at their stations. After a warm welcome from Commander Dave Banyas to members and guests, Sergeant at Arms Les Larson addresses Commander Banyas, requesting to present a number of unserviceable flags of our country for inspection and disposal. Commander Banyas instructs the Sergeant at Arms to advance with his detail and present the flags for disposal and inspection. The Sergeant at Arms calls his detail of young Marines under the direction of Supervisors Mr. and Mrs. John Ritter to attention. They form at the post of the Sergeant at Arms, carrying the flags which are to be inspected, march abreast down center until opposite the second vice commander, Bob Heidenrich. The Sergeant at Arms in his detail present second vice commander Heidenrich with unserviceable flags for his inspection. Upon confirmation that the conditions of these flags were the result of their usual service as the emblem of our country, the second vice commander orders the flags to be presented to the first vice commander, Mr. Dan Crawford, for inspection. The detail proceeds to present the flags to first vice commander Crawford for further inspection. Again, after confirmation that these flags have faded and worn over the graves of our departed comrades and the soldier and sailor, dead of all our nation's wars, the final inspection is made before Commander Banyas. Commander Banyas requests confirmation that the flags have been inspected by both the first and second vice commanders. Both concur, stating, since these flags have become faded and worn in a tribute of service and love, we recommend that they be fittingly destroyed. Commander Banyas addresses the detail assembled. Comrades, we have presented here these flags of our country, which have been inspected and condemned as unserviceable. They have reached their present state in a proper service of tribute, memory, and love. A flag may be a flimsy bit of printed gauze, or a beautiful banner of finest silk. Its intrinsic value may be trifling or great, but its real value is beyond price, for it is a precious symbol of all that we and our comrades have worked and lived for, and died for a free nation of free men, true to the faith of the past, devoted to the ideals and practice of justice, freedom, and democracy. Let these faded flags of our country 
be retired and destroyed with respectful and honorable rights, and their places be taken by bright new flags of the same size and kind, and let no grave of our soldier or sailor dead be unhonored and unmarked. Sergeant at Arms, assemble the color guard, escort the detail bearing the flags, and destroy these flags by burning. The member shall stand at attention. The detail about faces and proceeds to march down center to the fire. Chaplain Ed Harrison offered a prayer. The bugler sounds taps while the honor guard under the direction of Mr. Tom Meinhart and the Allied veterans fired the salute. On June 14, 1777, in order to establish an official flag for the new nation, the Continental Congress passed the First Flag Act, resolved that the flag of the United States be made of 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, Congress passed several acts that changed the shape, design, and arrangement of the flag and allowed for additional stars and stripes to be added to reflect the admission of each new state. Today the flag consists of 13 horizontal stripes, 7 red alternating with 6 white. The stripes represent the original 13 colonies. The stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White symbolizes purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. From its controversial beginnings, the American flag has been an important part of our culture. It has survived over 200 years and two world wars. The flag has evolved physically and symbolically in times of crisis and achievement. Unlike other countries, America only has two national symbols, the bald eagle and the American flag. While the bald eagle is internationally recognized, the American flag is a symbol known worldwide. The flag has been the inspiration for holidays, songs, poems, books, artwork, and more. It has been used to show nationalism, rebellion, and everything in between. The flag is so important that its history tells the story of America itself.
Our flag carries American ideas, American history, and American feelings. It is not a painted rag. It is a whole national history. It is the Constitution. It is the government. It is the emblem of the sovereignty of the people. It is the nation. Henry Ward Beecher, 1861